Welcome along then to the North Sea coast and Zandvoort, 25 miles away from Amsterdam and the host for today's Dutch Grand Prix. It's a race the great Jim Clark won on four occasions, leading for an astonishing total of 370 laps. Zandvoort circuit then, 14 corners, 10 to the right and four to the left, with plenty of steep camber and elevation changes to keep our drivers on their toes throughout the 2.6 mile lap and watch out for cars making use of the DRS zone into turn one to try and overtake. And with me as usual is Anthony Davidson. Let's have a chat about McLaren. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. An immense lap from Carlos Sainz yesterday puts him in pole position, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Bottas, Verstappen, Sergio Perez, and Leclerc, Ricardo, Giovinazzi, Schwartzman, and Johnson, Giotto, Norris, they've taken a grid penalty. Mick Schumacher and Russell, Latifi, Fernando Alonso, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty, Nikita Mazepin and Yuki Tsunoda, Ocon, they've taken a grid penalty, Stroll, Aitken and Pierre Gasly picks up the final grid slot today. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head to trackside for today's race. All right, guys, if you guys didn't already notice, we're starting in P10 for this race. First qualifying went pretty well. Uh, we got our softs views before the rain, and then Q2, we got knocked down to P14 because the rain was still going, and then uh, we tried to do a good run with the softs. Uh, we originally were going to be placed in P14, but there were some penalties all across the board, so we got bumped at the P10 for this race behind Giovinazzi and Schwartzman with Giotto and Norris behind us. So let's get this race going. All right, our five red lights. Currently behind Giovinazzi and Schwartzman as we start. Coming off to a good start. Quickly passing Robert Schwartzman. And then we end up going the outside of turn one. Uh, gain two more positions against Charles Leclerc and Giovinazzi. Trying to slot ourselves in as best as we can into P7 and trying to gain that position against Daniel Ricciardo. As, uh, Charles Leclerc still tries to fight for that position for P7 against myself. And uh, the grid basically goes single file here for the rest of the lap. Carlos Sainz still holding on to the first place with Valerie Bottas and Lewis Hamilton. Uh, following in second and third. Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez of Red Bull in fourth and fifth. And then myself, Charles Leclerc, the two Aston Martins separating the McLaren cars that are currently in P6 and P11. That of Daniel Ricciardo and Lando Norris. Coming up to the uh, main chicane towards the back end of the lap. Taking it pretty well. We're trying to close the gap on Daniel Ricciardo even though we don't get DRS here at the end of the lap. It only being the first one and that's going to be wrapping up our first lap of the race. Starting into P7, it's positive three positions from where we started one lap ago. And uh, now we can get into the groove and try to get past Daniel Ricardo as we go a little bit farther inside than we wanted to there. Cause a little bit of a slide there where Charles Leclerc can try to close in on our gap. But we still manage to keep our pace pretty well to keep that distance from him. We're still trying to put that pressure on Daniel Ricciardo as we're not really doing so well. But Daniel Ricciardo trying to pressure on Sergio Perez as we're losing a little bit of ground on him. Charles Leclerc ended up capitalizing on my mistake and trying to move in. But uh, I think there was a little bit of contact there where he backed off as I'm taking that wide towards the uh, Sector 2, end of, end of Sector 2, Sector 3. Moving on to lap 6 is... Finally, when we're able to make a move on Daniel Ricciardo, we have DRS at this time. 
at the start of lap 7, end of lap 6. Almost going to the wall there, but we do have DRS, same as him. And uh, we make the move on the inside. We're trying to make a double move on Sergio Perez as well, but we don't get that move. We end up being side by side with Daniel Ricardo for the next few turns here. Holding our line with him. He's going to be the inside, I'm going to be the outside. And moves the other way around on the previous turn, but uh, end up gives way. He ends up giving way for us to lock into that P6 with uh, Sergio Perez about a half second ahead of us on lap 7. Moving on to lap 9, we finally are able to make a move on Sergio Perez who is about two and a half seconds behind Lewis Hamilton. Using that DRS to our advantage, take the outside lane and holding that outside lane and finding enough room once we can to make that inside cut and securing the position of P5 against Sergio Perez. Separating the Red Bulls of Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez. Moving into the top five for a decent amount of points on lap 10. Moving on to lap 12, Carlos Sainz being in P1 finally comes in for his pit stop. About a second, seven and a half second lead on Valtteri Bottas and Lewis Hamilton. But uh, Valerie Bottas elects to stay out. And uh, our pit stop wasn't until later, about lap 21. So Lewis Hamilton comes in for a pit as well. The new leaders are going to be Valtteri Bottas, myself, Sergio Perez, Carlos Sainz going to be coming out in P4 with Lewis Hamilton behind and Max Verstappen following suit. Myself currently in lead lap 21 with Carlos Sainz coming in behind me. We're going to be swapping over from the mediums to the softs with this strategy. That way we didn't have our strategy match up with Carlos Sainz. So we're comfortable with giving Carlos Sainz a lead here. And uh, we're going to be coming out right between Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen with that uh, 16 to 20 second gap there. As you can see, that 13 second gap between myself and Valtteri Bottas. As uh, Valtteri Bottas comes in and passes myself while I'm in the pits. And then as we're coming out of the pits, Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen are fighting position. As we come out, wait to cross the white line and we have the inside lane. They have to give us that inside lane. So uh, that basically forces Max Verstappen to back off while we get a free P4 coming back out from D1. So it's only three position lost, but we still have made an improvement from the start of the race starting in P10. Fighting on the inside lane against Lewis Hamilton, getting third place and fighting for that position, trying to hold it. A little bit of contact between us both. As uh, he backs off a little bit, we cut a little short on the inside. Knowing that he's going to have the DRS, we still have to defend against that position here. Trying not to go wide too much. And uh, trying to stay as best as possible on that racing line as they come around to the chicane. Valtteri Bottas now 13 seconds ahead of us and we have about 14-15 laps to try and catch up to him and get a 1-2 for Unity Racing and get some maximize on those points for our team. Moving on to lap 27, moving in on Valtteri Bottas who is 12 seconds on Carlos Sainz but we're about a half a second now coming up to the chicane. We try to make a move but he locks up on the chicane. We try to move on the outside, he doesn't. We're following his toe on this last turn before the straight. We're gonna capitalize on that DRS move here and uh, attack his position there. Uh, have him under stress. So we're gonna be taking that inside lane with DRS. Knowing that he doesn't have it, we're gonna move in front of him, making that sure that we have that inside lane, try to cover it, but we uh, give enough room on the outside for Valtteri Bottas to attack. But uh, we end up holding that position as well and keeping a strong lead on P2 on lap 20 to 36. And uh, throughout the last few laps, um, trying to close the interval between myself and Carlos Sainz, even though I have the soft tires, Carlos Sainz having the hard tires, uh, we managed to only scrape off a few seconds here. And uh, we had to turn our focus towards defending against Valerie Bottas as he pretty much stayed within two seconds of us the whole time throughout the time that we're trying to close that gap between myself and Carlos Sainz. So the start of the final lap, Sergio Perez ends up 
getting a DNF. He has an engine issue. So he's going to be Sector 2, almost Sector 3 on this. So I didn't know it at the time. But uh, they're going to have a yellow sector there where we're going to have to slow down. And I have about a second gap on Valtteri Bottas right now. So there's Carlos Sainz coming around towards the end, passing Sergio Perez at the DNF. We're coming down the hill, we get the yellow flag, and we have to slow down. Valtteri Bottas is not able to pass me on the yellow flag, but he does manage to close the gap between himself and mine. So we're basically trying to defend our line as best as possible as we come into these last few turns of the race. Knowing that interval is getting smaller and smaller, we try to defend as best as we can on the chicane, taking as best as we can, hold the inside lines. That way Valtteri Bottas cannot use the DRS towards the end of the straight, end of this turn, and we end up finishing P2. It's another 1-2 for Unity. What a great race, Dan, and what a magnificent victory here at the Dutch Grand Prix. Anthony Davidson, what helped them deliver this result, do you think? Well, I honestly feel it was down to the driver and car today. I mean, we can talk driver skill all day, but if you don't have a solid team to back that, you're never going to get anywhere. When you hit that sweet spot of having both an excellent driver and an incredible car, that's when you see results like those we witnessed today. Well, I'm thoroughly exhausted after the excitement of that race, but I'm sure it's nothing compared to our drivers here. They've worked hard to make it up there, and it's great to see them make their way out onto the podium. Science extends his lead at the top, getting ever closer to securing the championship. After an incredible day of racing, who was your driver of the day, Ant? I have to give it to Johnson. They demonstrated a very delicate touch in close proximity to other cars, as well as showing a lot of maturity and patience in difficult situations. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. No change in the top spot, but with today's points, their hold on the lead is getting weaker. Meanwhile, good work from Aston Martin this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. After an event like that, who knows what the sport has in store for us next time. Be sure to join us again as we continue to bring you the latest excitement in Formula One.